All right, welcome everybody back to another film session. Love these things. Plus, we were official. My mom officially said she can understand some of the football plays. She was watching it. She was loving it. So once you get there, once you get Mama McCray's approval, we're all set. As always, George Carmi is in the co-host chair. Mark Bullock and Nick Ackridge are here to break down all the film for us. Fellas, uh, it was not uh, was not great. And, uh, and we'll take a look and that. see, uh, again, the, uh, the offensive line, the quarterback, the We'll figure it out who was at fault, but the quarterback got hit a lot on Sunday. Nick looks we'll and get jump right on into it. Yeah. Um, uh, start with the sacks. First sack of the game. Um we'll let it run real quick and then we'll kind of talk through it. Again, not a lot of time there for Sam Howell and quick pressure, easy sack, and kind of highlighted the uh the whole day, basically on Sunday, was was him on his back. Now, where do we? Where does? Where does? Where did we start here? Pre-snap. What? What is? What are we looking at here, Mark? So we've got um, a, a pretty basic shallow cross concept, um, which is the core of this play, where you've got Logan Thomas spotting up over the middle, and um, sorry, no, it's a different player spotting up over the middle, and Logan Thomas running the shallow, um, and then you've got a, a little post wheel concept up at the top. Um, and the idea is, is that you can read the, the post and the wheel and then the shallow cross will come naturally into your vision as the kind of underneath check down option. Um, and if you kind of get pressured, your ideal hot route is that shallow cross. Um, so that's, that's what they're looking at. Um, and it's a concept that they've run quite a few times this year. Um, it's something that the Chiefs ran a lot last year and, and had some success with um and it, i think this was what the second play of the game or their first pass play of the game um and yeah the giants came with um a, a little bit of a blitz where they drop off one edge rusher off the other side uh and they they bring a linebacker up the middle to replace him and and washington actually picks it up um but they just uh they Nick Gates has a has a bit of an issue blocking Dex Lawrence, which was kind of a, a theme of the of the game. Um, and yeah, Hal didn't really have too much time to to work through things. And Mark, if we go if we go back to the pre snap, I, I know you had tweeted out the other day that you thought that Hal got better at recognizing some of the blitzes coming as the game went on. It just took too long. He didn't get it till the fourth quarter. So. Are we are we sure that that's that's his job and not the center's job? Who who gets them in and out of there, and who who like who points out the blitz, blitz package here, assigning who's got to pick up what? Yeah, well, the teams do it differently. Some teams have when when you've got a young quarterback, they they like the center to take a lot of that responsibility. Um, some teams, most teams, will have the quarterback have the ability to overrule the center if he sees something. Um, but then he has to be responsible if, if he's wrong. Um, and then uh, other teams will just put it all on the quarterback and and, and have him identify things and, and, and set the protection properly. So um, without being in the room, it, it's impossible to know just how much they're putting on, on Sam Howe's right. plate. Um, here, the issue wasn't necessarily the spotting the blitz or, or getting it picked up. Um, a, a theme you'll notice in, in this game is that Washington actually had plenty of blockers in to pick up every pretty much every blitz other than when when it was cover zero um where they they, they can't they literally can't uh block everyone um but on on every other blitz they had enough guys in um they just they either had someone failing a block or they they had um the the line sliding the wrong way um but on this occasion if, if nick runs it through and you'll see it better probably from the end zone angle um, the offensive line and, and I think it was Brian Robinson and running back, they have enough guys in there and they actually pick it up correctly. Um, it's just a case of Gates loses to to Lawrence and there's perhaps a little window there where where when Gates is losing, he's somewhat losing slowly um, and how could potentially step up in the pocket to, to let Gates try to recover that. Um, that you can oh, wow. see there's a little bit of a window there 
um, where he could step up in the pocket and avoid that sack and, and, and then hit that check down to the tight end on the, on the shallow cross. That's Logan Thomas running across the middle of the field open there. Yeah. Um, yep. cause that, that he, route does go this and, way and yep. he kind of posts He's running here. a little sit. Yeah. Um, and that, that is the basis of a shallow cross concept. Um, and it works cause they, they've got the, the tight end running free. Um, but Hal just needs the, the time to hit that. And you know, that, the the end zone angle shows it best when, when there's a there's a clear pocket that how could step up into but the pressure is pretty quick um so ideally you'd like to see sam how right here shuffle up to his left and step up in the pocket and give gates a chance to run lawrence by him um, and then he can reset and hit that crosser but um it it happens so quickly um it happens in a flash that it it's tough to be overly critical of how here, um, you know, ideally, yeah, ideally he, he steps up and he, he can avoid that or, or give Gates at least a chance to run and buy him. But um, he doesn't in this, on this play and ends up getting sacked. Yeah. Go ahead, Dirk. I mean, it's just, I mean, like you said, it's, you, you'll see it a lot more later on that this is one of the kind of few times they, they actually had it blocked. Well, um, they had everyone where they were supposed to be. I mean, Maybe you would ask Charles to be a little bit better here, kind of picking up this looper. But again, that's on the running back to pick up the linebacker. He does his job. It's just good, good rush by Dexter Lawrence beats beats Gates, and like he's like Mark said, yes, you could definitely see him step up, and in, in a faster sort of process allows him to do that. But it's also a really quick loss, and it doesn't really give him much of a chance. And mm. you get a sack. Sometimes you just tip your cap to a really good defensive line and make it a hell of a play, right? Yep. Which, which feels and, like that's what this is. Yeah. And, and Lawrence is a, a damn good young defensive line. He's one of the better young defensive <laughs> linemen in this league. So, um, very good, so. sometimes you, you do just have to say, you know, he got the better of us on that play. All right. Let's look at the next one. So not, so not terrible on this one. No. Um, and, and this one kind of falls along the same theme where the, the actual protection scheme is, is there. Um, they just get kind of, beaten up front the the offensive lineman miss a, a block and um you can see it's it's basically just a a, a stunt up front lawrence is, oh. is stunting and oh wow uh i think it's leonard williams wraps around him and sadiq charles is is kind of late to um adjust to to him looping um yeah you can see here charles is is kind of so focused on trying to help on on dexter lawrence that he doesn't notice the other defensive tackle looping around. I think it's Leonard Williams. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, so he, Williams just comes free. Um, and yeah, there's, there there wasn't a hell of a lot Hal could do. Nick and Mark, like, throughout the earlier part of the season, the interior of the offensive line actually got some credit. People were kind of giving Charles areas of growth and talking about Sam Cosby playing well and just kind of, you know, having great communication. Was this kind of like an outlier game for them, or have they been struggling with stunts throughout the season? What have you been seeing? Gates has been struggling more so than anyone else, I, I, I would say. Okay. Um, I, I think it's, you know, new team and whatnot, and yeah, he's been struggling more so. But, but this past week, it, it kind of looked like Charles and Gates looked like they never really have seen a stunt before. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are times where it's like this one, it, it's pretty basic. I mean, Charles is just too aggressive from the snap. I mean, he needs to kind of just sit here and. And I don't mind helping out. I love the chip. He can't, he brings him to the ground, but it's too early in the process for that sort of help and that sort of chip. He needs to be a little bit more patient. And the second he does that, he's he's kind of screwed with with how Williams is going to get right around him. And again, I'm not wow. obviously on the line with him. I don't know what the communication was like there, but um, I, I just think you can see right from the snap he he is ready to just kind of kill kill Lawrence here on that that chip there, and he's never in position to recover for for the loop. And then, Nick, we talked about a numbers game, you know, often on this podcast. So, like, going into this play, is that the automatic tell for Charles? Like, I should be hopping out to my right automatically? Or is it like, or is he coached to kind of sit there for a punt moment to pause before he goes over there? They're, they're going to be sliding to the right because just okay. based on, you know, you've got one, two, three, four threats over here. Gotcha. Um, and you've got one, two, three on this side or four with the halfback. So, Charles is going to slide over this way anyway just to help. Mm -hmm. You've got one – two over here, but I would believe that the halfback was kind of scanning for, for him if he if he kind of blitzes here. But so they're always going to be sliding this way. He's just he's just too aggressive. I mean, 
it's the right call. It's the right protection. You know, once these two linebackers drop out, Gibson's going to chip and release to the, to the flat. Um, so it's, they have it right pre-snap. It's just, you know, one guy's a little too aggressive. This, this is what happens when Dexter Lawrence whoops you to, you know, two <laughs> or three plays earlier, you get aggressive on yep. him. <clears throat> yep, exactly. Uh, th- this is, th- we won't get into this a lot on today's film session, but is that, was that uh, Rodriguez out there in the backfield or was that Gibson? That was, that was Gibson this time. It was Gibson. Okay. Because I was going to say, Gibson did not play very much. It did not feel like in the game on Sunday night. And I think that's becoming a trend. Like I said, we won't get into that a ton. Maybe I maybe it just feels that way, but I thought that was odd. Yeah, the no, snaps, the, the snaps are definitely dropping, I would say. I mean, Rodriguez is playing more in the run game as well. And no, that, that was something that kind of stood out that Rodriguez had, was getting more snaps, but um yeah, that was that was more in the run game rather than pass mm-hmm. protection. Gibson was still kind of the preferred guy there. Um, should we move on to the, the third set? Sack number three. <laughs> Almost halfway there. <laughs> but it's interesting when you when you go back and look at the film, they don't look at least the first couple so far have not looked as gross as I thought that some of these plays would look. Now maybe they get worse here. We'll see. When you're when you're playing a team and a defense that's gonna blitz you like Wink Martindale does and with the exotic blitzes he comes up with and all that sort of stuff, one missed assignment, one blown block will ruin a whole play. I mean, you don't you won't see it as much with teams that are just going to rush four and drop back seven. But when you're rushing six, seven guys, one miss assignment on lock can screw absolutely everything up, and, and that'll stop you from, you know, the quarterback you were having a chance to deliver the ball. And then Nick, kind of like the underlining theme, you have to kind of play your hand now. But was it lack of preparation? Was it lack of coaching in regard to like having the improper protection up front, or was it just strictly? The Giants had better wins on the defensive line. What do, you, what do you see so far? Do you want to kind of hold off for now? I think it was just execution, and you'll, you'll kind mm-hmm. of see it throughout the rest of it. I, I really do think it was execution. And like Mark said on the first one, they had the numbers for pretty much all of them except for when they you know sent eight people on cover zero like on the last play. But they had the numbers. They just – they didn't execute. And, and sometimes, you know, that's just down to the players. I mean, maybe you would like to see the enemy kind of know that they're not going to execute. But again, at that point, it's just kind of – they're NFL players. They have to execute simple stunt pass offs, exactly. unlike the last play. So, it's, yeah, it's kind of tough. This play is, is a pretty good example of um, kind of what we're getting at here. Is that they? This is the one where they slide wrong, right? Exactly, um, and, and that was kind of more of the theme that happened. The the longer the the well, the more of these sacks were as a result of that, where um, they they have. A lot of guys into protect. We we've already seen that on the first two where they have the right numbers. Here they have the running back does a, a play action fake and he stays into protect. They keep the tight end in to protect. Um, so they have seven guys in, um, and there's only three guys out running routes. Um, but they they don't identify where the blitz is coming from. And so when we'll see it from the end zone angle here, the the Giants send quite a, a heavy blitz here, um, and, and they they do quite a lot with different guys stunting and and the linebacker adds on when he sees gibson staying in um if you roll on a little bit nick um we'll come back to this um but if you roll on they'll, it'll pause it again in a minute when um you'll see the the overload so here we go we there we go we had the overload there if you want to pause it there so you can see the offensive line is sliding to the left um and so they've got the center the left guard and the left tackle all sliding left and they also have a tight end staying in to help um, but the Giants only have, actually have two guys rushing on that side, whereas the right tackle and, and right guard are, are staying on the right side, and Antonio Gibson's coming across, um, but the, the Giants have four guys, so there's there's no way that those guys up front can actually pick up all four of those guys. They're just a man short. Um, and the Giants do a nice thing here of, you know, Antonio Gibson... <laughs> I believe Antonio Gibson's sliding across at first to pick up the safety blitzing off the edge, but they, the giants love to do what's called adding on where the linebacker is reading the running back in man coverage. And if the running back stays in to protect, then he adds on. And because he adds on straight up the middle, Gibson actually does a really nice job of peeling off blocking the safety on the edge and and stepping up in, in the a gap there and, and, and blocking that linebacker. But unfortunately, that then leaves the safety completely free off the edge. Um, so 
that's the type of thing that was happening quite frequently where they they have the numbers in to protect um and that's kind of all that the enemy can really do for them is give them the, the numbers to protect they've only got three guys out running routes um so at that point they need either the center to identify this or sam howell to identify this they need someone to identify that actually we're overloaded to the right side we need to well, certainly how has got to be able to see that right i mean that's got to be on him yeah um well you would think so but again without being in the room we don't know how much okay. they're putting on how and how much they're they're giving it to gates. nick gates at center or someone else um yeah like with veteran quarterbacks you could know that like hey this is on the quarterback but young rookie quarterback you don't know how much he knows and how much gates knows and, and whatnot so it's tough to when you're choosing who to blame when they they slide the wrong way it's tough to kind of place all the blame on one person gotcha and it's unfortunate because I, I believe Terry's streaking down the middle of the field on this thing on the on a crossing route. Yeah, well, they have both crossing routes are there. Like Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel are, are kind of available. The only one that's not really available is, is Dotson's route off the motion up the seam. But that is more just to grab attention and open up the stuff underneath. And um, yeah, you'll see it as it plays out here. They Terry comes open straight away. Samuel is is there for a potential throw as well, but because they didn't get the protection slide right, um, Hal just has no chance. Um, I mean, and he gets to the top of his drop here, and he's already I, got... Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's not even There's He's no not chance. even really getting to the top of his drop. He's trying yeah. to shorten <laughs> his drop and, and <laughs> climb into the pocket to avoid that. So Jerry's um, got his hand up. Yep. Do you have another backside view when you guys get a chance? I want to see, like... I like to just kind of look at the tells and kind of see what they're looking at. So for me, it kind of looks... Um, you know, one more second there, right there. So to me, it kind of looks obvious that there's more pressure coming from the right hand side. I guess because 28 is kind of running over there, that kind of seems like a bullet's coming from the left hand side. Or like what? Again, what's it's, going on here? Okay. It's a numbers thing, and I would agree with you. I, I mean, again, Gates and Howell probably know more about football than I'll ever learn. But okay, to me, this seems like an easy decision to kind of slide it to the right. Okay, um, especially with you when you have the tight end over here. Mm -hmm. um, I, you just I think have, you've got the, more threats to the left. Yeah, the the actual ends of the, the the sorry the main replay angle the start one. Um, if you go back to that, um, you can see Washington has kind of a bunch set over there with the tight end and two receivers. Mm -hmm. And when you think of the amount of man coverage the Giants had shown in this game up until this point, the idea should be is that yes, the Giants have guys that could potentially be blitzing threats off of that side, but if they're playing man coverage, there's three guys over there with three eligible receivers over there mm -hmm. um, because they don't know the tight end staying in. So uh, then you look at the other side, you've suddenly got say, this safety number 27 who's not really matching up with anyone. So that would be the indicator that, hey, we need to slide this protection the other way. And, and perhaps what they thought is that, well, we've actually got Antonio Gibson in to protect and as i said I, when when the ball is snapped gibson is looking i think at that safety and thinking i need to get across but then the giants have that add-on with the linebacker and yeah you can kind of see gibson looks like he's looking out to this side thinking i need to get across to help with that safety but then that that linebacker adds on because gibson's staying in to protect and gibson smartly peels off and, and picks up that pressure because the guy in the a gaps more of a threat than the guy off the edge um but that just means they're overloaded and and they can't really do anything about it so um yeah i i think that's what you have to to be looking at as as a quarterback is you have to be thinking okay they've played a lot of man coverage they're probably going to be playing man coverage and blitzing again that's what they've been doing all game mm -hmm. they're matching up three for three at, with the bunch set at the top they've got this extra safety at the bottom that you know we isn't really accounting for anyone at this point. Um, and then when Jahan Dotson kind of comes in motion, he's followed by the corner that was on the other side. Um, so it it kind of, that would be the tell, is that, you, you as Nick said, it's a numbers game. You have to... You There's have to me drawing of... numbers as best I could, but essentially you've got, <laughs> you've got four eligible receivers onto the left to the field side here, and you've got one, two, three defenders, maybe a fourth one with this edge rusher peeling off. And you've got one, two, possibly three coverage defenders down here at the bottom. 
with just one eligible receiver. So that's kind of your your tell, as Mark was saying right there, that, hey, maybe the blitz is going to be coming from the right side and we should be sliding that way. Um, so, again, that's just kind of an execution thing, really. Interesting. Um, All right. You want to move on to the next one? Yep. Now we're halfway done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was all. Was that all the first quarter? Uh, yes. Oof. I think so. Um, yeah. So this this one's another one where again they're they're keeping in seven to help protect the tight end staying in to try to chip the running back staying in. They've only got three real guys running routes, um, and again they get the the slide wrong. Um, and they're overloaded and, and they they can't really handle it. Um, they have a guy blitzing off the slot. They have a an Isaiah Simmons kind of lined up as an edge rusher on one side quite a lot this game and, and pretty much every single time he dropped out. Um, and that was an indicator that, that Sam Howe did kind of learn as the game went on. And, and later on, he started to identify, okay, Simmons is on the li- end of uh, line of scrimmage and, and he's typically been dropping out so we'll slide the protection of the way but this is one of those where uh he hadn't yet learned that lesson um and so he didn't slide the protection the other way and and they uh they were overloaded a bit and they, uh, the giants also ran a pretty nice stunt up front which which helped confuse things because they don't just look to overload with um an extra rusher with a, a slot corner or safety or, or whatever off one side they will look to stunt and loop guys around um, up front to, to further kind of confuse the, the blocking up front. Am I wrong to assume that Logan Thomas didn't do a good job on the chip block there? Well, that's, I couldn't tell whether it was Wiley or Thomas. Will you roll it back, Nick? Yeah, it's, so Logan Thomas is trying to stay into chip, but he's staying into chip what he thinks is the Ed Rusher, which at, yeah. to him right there at the snap is Isaiah Simmons. But then Simmons drops off into coverage, and the actual Ed Rusher – loops around the defensive tackles so he mm. hasn't actually got anyone really to chip and suddenly he has to wait for dexter lawrence to stunt across and it's kind of hard to chip a guy that's what 350 pounds um, <laughs> well and, yeah, that's just wiley not getting out far enough on the edge too right before well, we what, blame wiley yeah i'm, he, I'm about to, he, okay he trips he steps on cosme's foot here uh, okay so right there you can see okay. Cosme, yeah. All right. Cosme trips him right here, yep. um, which is why Wiley looks like he's getting absolutely obliterated, but he's really not. He gets tripped. So, well, that's why we watch these, right? That's why you, you watch the right. film? That's right. So again, not necessarily the the worst sack in the world when you realize that the immediate pressure comes after he trips over his own guy. Yeah. So the underlining theme so far, gentlemen, is improperly identifying where the pressure is coming from and not sliding correctly is then and then maybe execution is one-on-one losses as well yeah well they have another issue here which um is the the looping defensive end um and Sadiq charles i think is probably at fault you can see they have the the slot corner coming off the left side um and you've got the edge rusher also blitzing and really leno is the one responsible for the edge rusher and antonio gibson's the one that needs to step up and block the the slot corner which he does um but Sadiq Charles fans out to the left as well to try to pick up that slot corner which shouldn't really be his responsibility um and so what happens you can see him there peeling off and looking to go pick him up but Nick Gates is expecting Sadiq Charles to be there to help pick up that stunning defensive end from the other side um and so it's a miscommunication between them neither of them end up picking him up and he gets a free run up the middle um if he doesn't get that free run up the middle, then Howell is perhaps able to step up in the pocket and avoid, you know, the guy off the edge that Wiley tripped up or Leno also kind of surrenders a bit of pressure on the other side. But those tackles have a chance to run their guys by him if he's able to step up. But because that defensive end comes looping around and, and neither Gates nor Charles is able to pick him up, um, he's got nowhere to step up. And so that all kind of combines together into the sack. Yeah, I, I was. Nick, how do you view eighty-two as a as a pass blocker? Uh, you don't really want him pass blocking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't really want him pass blocking. I mean, the the chip is tough here. I mean, you're you're chipping Dexter Lawrence, three hundred fifty pound guy. It's not much on on him here. It, it's it's really 
it's really Charles again, and I hate picking on the same guy, but he, he's just a little too aggressive um, again here. Usually when you have a corner blitzing, it's going to be the, the running backs. I mean, it's it's the backer is going to take the small guys. You, you don't want your running back taking the, the heavy defensive lineman, and you don't want your heavy offensive lineman blocking, you know, the, the smaller linebackers and, and corners. Um, so just too aggressive, sees that kind of corner blitz, but I guess in his mind he didn't know that Gibson was staying in. Um, so, yeah. And I wonder how much of this just comes down to a lack of, you know, how many how many snaps have Gates and Charles and these guys all played together now? I mean, how much of this is that? It, it, I saw coaching say this feels more like continuity and communication amongst the linemen than it does knowing assignments. Is that is that? Yeah. How, I mean, how long does it take you know to get used to each other on this thing? It does take some time, and the the other thing is that they haven't faced a team that has been anywhere near as aggressive blitzing as the, this Giants defense. Um, so, yeah, that it, this is something that they they won't have seen very often um, this year. Um, and I suspect certain other teams, like the Cowboys, will probably try to replicate this yeah. kind of style where, where they're blitzing a lot of guys. Um, so it's something they're going to have to get used to. Um, but it's not something that the other teams they face this year have typically done. The, the, the formula so far has been you play coverage, um, you rush four, and you maybe switch up where the, the fourth guy is coming from. Um, and that's been the way to, to kind of confuse Hal and get him to hold onto the ball and create sacks that way. Whereas the Giants took a very different approach and they're going to blitz. They're going to blitz heavily. They're going to they're gonna basically blitz every play. Um, and they're going to make you kind of have to diagnose where different guys are coming from get the protections correct and obviously washington struggled with that yeah and the problem is it's it's different from what they've played in the past but it's not different from what the giants normally do and what wake martindale is constantly right. constantly doing so um again i it something that they should have kind of expected the stunts the looping the the exotic blitzes all that sort of stuff it's something they should have expected and kind of been prepared for and and again i i don't really put it down to the the play caller here because they have the guys they have what they need in order to block this sort of thing and it at times it just kind of comes down to execution and you can't go out there and block for them and tell them who to block every single play so it's just uh it, it's just pretty tough at what point did you guys did you feel did you notice that Hal was starting to feel the effects of the hits he was taking it, it felt like it was the decision making towards the third quarter, I'd say, to me, felt like it was being slowed down by the amount of hits he was taking. Did you see it that way or no? I would say he was struggling pretty much straight away. Um, yeah. and, and we might get to that. We have time. With it. We do have a package of clips on Al, but I don't know if we'll get to those. Um, but like he, he was missing some fairly basic stuff that he would typically make, and that was early in the first and second quarter. So... Um, I, I would say he he was probably rattled pretty pretty early, um, and once once he started to adapt and understand some keys, like we talked about with Isaiah Simmons here on on one side, and he was typically lining up as an edge rusher and then dropping off, and that meant the blitz was coming from the other side. Once he started identifying that kind of thing by this kind of late third, early fourth quarter, that was when he started to feel a little bit more comfortable, and that was when we saw the offense start to almost get themselves back into the game um and, and put some drives together but um yeah you, you you'd ideally not like it to take three quarters for them to get to that point yep. hey nick and mark i'm gonna throw a question to you guys i don't know if you can potentially answer it but you know that we know what um you know mick martindale's gonna do with his blitzing with the giants we know it's gonna run these stunts and loops throughout the season it hasn't been effective right going into this game they had five total sacks they had five sacks going into the first half against the commanders was it just simply ineffectiveness by the commanders, in your opinion? Or, like, what would be the differentiating factor between, like, why it wasn't working throughout the year and it did work against Washington? Any hype? Any guesses, potentially? I'd, I'd have to go back and watch all the other Giants, the pass rushing games, and, and kind of see mm -hmm. how, you know, the offensive lines performed against against them and whatnot. But, mm -hmm. again, kind of like I said before, it's not, it's not unusual for Wink Martindale to blitz your face off. And I think yeah. he was salivating for this one with kind of how Sam Howell's played – you know, in the past where he's taken a lot of sacks on himself, but 
Like, I don't think this was really on Howell. There wasn't much he could do in, in a lot of these sacks to kind of avoid it. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd have to kind of rewatch and, and go check to see why it wasn't working for the Giants against other teams. It feels teams. like as we get through these sacks, it was just one of those days. And it seems like that's the case for a lot of Giants games. I'm not sure what happens when they play the Giants, but <laughs> you know, all hell goes loose and, and it looks like the Giants are Super Bowl caliber yeah, team. You know, exactly, every year. Well, let's mm-hmm. get through these uh, last couple of sacks and take a look at some Chase Young while we're here. Yep. Um, so this sack. Yeah, this this one was another one where um, they they had the where I talked about earlier with the linebacker adding on. Um, it, it's it's oft, often referred to as a green dog, um, which is why I've drawn up the linebacker with a green arrow um, yeah. because he's he's reading basically the running back. He's the the Giants are playing pure man man coverage here, um, and he's reading the running back. And as soon as he spots the running back staying in to protect, um, he then adds on and and joins the rush. Um, so Washington, uh, I don't love the the concept called here, but they they don't really get any separation from any of their receivers, um, and, and Gibson stays in to protect. But the the linebacker adds on, and, and he comes free, but he's far from the first guy that gets there. <laughs> um, they they get quite a few guys there, and, and again, it's it's Nick Gates basically struggling with, wow. with Dexter Lawrence up front, and and you know, Sadiq Charles also not helping out particularly well with with his defender stunting inside charles should be able to feel that and and try to slide across and help nick gates with with lawrence but um he kind of gets caught in no man's land and, and not helping anyone and and gates desperately needs that help um as most centers would against a guy like lawrence um and yeah but e- even if they get that picked up then you have that linebacker green dogging um and you know, he's he's completely unaccounted for. Um, so, but at least if, if Charles and, and Gates had got Lawrence sorted out, um, it would have given Howe an opportunity to try to make a throw, but um, there, there wasn't really anyone open either. As, as we're watching these, it makes me feel more like I can't believe that the Giants came into this game with five sacks rather than they accumulated, you know, six sacks on us in the yeah. game, like, it's more mind blowing that they only had five rather than they got six because well the Falcons did it the week before, right? The other side of the, the Giants aggressive game plan is that if you can ID blitzes and you can get them picked up, yep. there's opportunity for big plays. Um and like we saw it with the, the last play, um Terry McCorum was running wide open. Um and, and there was a few instances of that where if you can ID that blitz and and you have enough guys in to protect, which Washington had consistently throughout the game. Um, they just failed to ID the blitzes and, and where they were coming from um, consistently enough. Um, if if they were able to do that and, and get that protection sorted, then you can look and hit those deep shots to McLaurin or or whoever is is getting open, and you can create some explosive plays. And, and a, that's probably. I, I like Nick. I'd need to go back and watch the Giants more consistently to to know. But that would be my guess: is the blitzes weren't quite getting there, um, and that gives lots of opportunities on the outside. I got an interesting question for you. And it's kind of hard to get in someone else's head, but if you were the coach, if you're Eric Benjamin, you're your offensive coordinator, and you are actually running plays where there should be protection in theory and there should be people being open. Do you see this being the reluctance to change his game plan? Like, you know, it should work out guys. We just kind of have people pick up the blitzes. Like, do you, do you kind of expect that's what he was seeing in your opinion or like, I don't I, know, I think, a hard question to put out there. I <laughs> think that's what he was thinking throughout the first half mm-hmm. is that he was saying that, Hey, this needs to be picked up. We've got the guys in here. It's got to be protected. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of realized in the second half that, okay, they're not picking these up. We need to change some things. And that's when you saw them start rolling Sam out consistently on in the third and fourth quarter and gotcha. you know just sprinting him out from the start so that the blitzes wouldn't even work. And that's when they finally kind of got some success. So, you know, you could place some blame saying, hey, you got to, you know, make that change faster. But also at the same point, he was just expecting his guys to, you know, kind of just do their job and it was not working at all. Okay, one. There, we got one more, right? Yep, one more sec. One more sack. <laughs> One more. Hey, before we get into this sack, I'm, I'm curious, you know, some of the things I saw running around Twitter was like, 
you know, it, you know, everybody's always pining for the backup, and I'm not suggesting don't people watch and kill me, but I'm not suggesting that Brissett go in. But are the are the mistakes being made something that if Brissett is in can be cleaned up? Or again, was this just a day where a couple of defensive linemen really just took them to task? In in theory, you would think a veteran quarterback would be able to identify blitzes better than Sam Howell did in this game, um, and that was that was in my eyes the reason for a fair few of these sacks is that they they have the guys in there to p- protect and they're just not identifying who's rushing from where and sliding the line the right way. Um, and again, I don't know whether that's on how whether that's on Nick Gates. Typically, with a, a veteran quarterback, as Nick said, you, you would you'd expect the veteran quarterback to take charge of that. Um, but when you've got a young guy like Hal, you don't know how much is on his plate. Um, so it, it's hard to put the blame on Hal when when you don't know that. Um, but yeah, it, a veteran quarterback in theory um, would help with that. Um, would help negate that and, and ID those blitzes. But um, you know, it, it's also. Brissett's first year in this offense, so perhaps he he would need to learn. Well, I say he needs to learn the protections. He probably knows the protections. He just knows them as a different language, um, mm-hmm. and and so he might have some issues there. We we don't really know. Um, there, there's not really a hell of a lot he could do for you know Nick Gates just getting beat by Dexter Lawrence or That's Sadiq true. Charles not picking up a, a looping defensive end like that. That is a um, error from the offensive lineman, so he couldn't really do a hell of a lot about that. But he, in theory, he could have done a little bit better on on some of those overload blitzes where where they were outnumbered, despite having the correct number of blockers in. Yeah, it, it's also kind of like a better question for previous weeks when Howell was taking a lot of sacks on himself. That's when you could see someone like Brissett, kind of who does not take a lot of sacks on himself, and that's when you could kind of ask that question. But like Mark said, the, this. It's tough to really put any of these on how. I mean, he didn't have much of a chance on on a lot of them. Last sack. Similar theme. Unblocked guy coming through. Party at the quarterback. <laughs> I think four guys tackled him at once there. And yeah, so we got another green dog thing here where the the linebacker is is reading the running back and in man coverage and, and Washington were trying to do a uh, uh, max protect shot basically um, where they had, they had a dagger concept and a go route um, and they, they wanted to try to, I, I think this might've been on like third and 10 or something like that. So they were trying to pick up a first down um, and trying to hit the ball down the field. Um, so they, they do kind of, it's not really a real play action fake. It's just a, a play action protection um, that they they use to keep seven men in, and it re- resolves around having the tight end and the, the running back block the edge rusher as a kind of combination, while the rest of the offensive line slides left. Um, and typically, that that gives you seven blockers in, and, and you're able to pick up most things. Um, but the the linebacker does a nice job adding on again um, once he reads the running back, kind of working towards the the edge rusher. Um, he then adds on, but he adds on late. So the offensive line doesn't really have a chance to pick him up. And Robinson's so focused on helping John Bates on, on the edge rusher that he doesn't see him. Um, and that leaves him to come right free up the middle. Um, and, you know, when, when you have seven guys in to protect and there's, what, six Giants players there, you expect the offensive line and, and the, the two extra guys helping to be able to pick up that those those six guys and that should give Howell time to allow those routes to develop down the field. Um, but obviously uh, that time isn't afforded to Howell on, on, on this play. Yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, you'd want Brian Robinson to be a little more patient and, and pick up, you know, the linebacker, but linebacker is also reading him. Once he sees he's in the block, he's going to come. And right here, you would like Robinson to kind of notice that here. Um, but again, he does also need to help the tight end because you have a tight end on a, on an edge rusher here. And so, it's a um, it's a good play by the linebacker to, to kind of come free like that. But um, I, I would pin this on the running back. It's, you know, all of these linemen, they're sliding to the left here and they've got they're covered by each 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 blocker is doing good here. And then you just have a, a free linebacker. And wow. 
it, it would be interesting to know, like from the people calling the plays, what was supposed to happen here. Because while I totally see this with Brian Robinson, he immediately goes tight end. And I wonder, like you've got four guys now there blocking the two defensive tackles. I wonder if 71 at some point wasn't supposed to to shove and get back to the to the linebacker coming here. You've typically the as I said, typically with the this kind of protection, it's a play action protection that a lot of teams will run. Um, and it the it's one of those plays where you'll see a lot of people be like, why the hell are we leaving a tight end on a star edge rusher? Um, and this is why they do it. They, 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 this is a kind of, they're trying to slow down the edge rusher with a play action fake. They, and then they have the offensive line slide completely out of the way. And then to try to help out, um, the tight end, so he's not left one on one with with a star edge rusher. They have the running back slide across, and then they've got two on one. And you hope that the two are able to slow down, uh, along with the play action fake, is able to slow down that one defensive end, and that buys you the quarterback time to to hit the play action shot down the field. Um, so it, it's it's just a case of um, yeah, I, I think Nick's right. Ideally, you'd like Robinson to be able to I- identify that that linebacker adding on, especially as that's something that had been happening basically the entire game. Um, but it was also something that was happening the entire game, mostly to Antonio Gibson because he was the guy that was the protection back most of the time. Um, and Brian Robinson isn't always the the guy staying in to protect. He, he's Typically, when it's an obvious passing situation, Gibson's the guy in there. So, so Robinson doesn't quite have the same experience because um, we saw earlier there was that play where where Gibson was going to block the the safety off the edge, and, and he id would the the linebacker adding on, and he adjusted. Whereas Robinson, you know, doesn't have that experience and and, and misses out here. So, if, before we get, before we, I was going to say before we get to the Chase Young package, Nick. I mean, how do you? At, we've, we've watched all the sacks now. How do, how do you wrap up the day as far as the, how, how the protection of the sacks actually went? I, I know people kind of hated it when, when Rivera said it, but you got to do your job. I mean, it was it's kind of what it came down to. I mean, it, it, it sucks that it's that simple that they just have to do their job, but they had, you know, what they wanted. I mean, it it's tough. You know, the, the Giants do bring an exotic package, but it's something you're, you should be prepared for throughout the week. You should know that it's coming and, and you just have to execute. And they just did not. And the the sacks, you know, it went from being, you know, mostly on Sam Howell throughout the past couple of weeks to now pretty much on the offensive line. And and so it was, uh, it was rough. All right. Let's wrap, let's wrap the show up with some good things because Chase Young again was very good this game. Yeah. I mean, it was, I think his best game um, of the week, and it was. It's tough that it happened in one of a, a very demoralizing loss where you know <laughs> you, your team only scores seven points. But on the defensive end, he was he was really really good. Yeah, and I I just put together a package of of three rushes here, um, starting off with his his one of his sacks, um, and and this one's one where he gets a really good jump off the edge. He, he times the snap really really well, um, and. That allows him to kind of be almost level with the tackle by the by the time the tackle gets out of his first step, um, and then we just see the explosiveness. You can see he's he's got mm-hmm. that jump. The ball, it's almost close to being offsides because mm-hmm. the ball isn't really snapped, but he also hasn't fully crossed the line of scrimmage. So it's um, he's got a really good timing on that snap, and he gets level very quickly on on his second step. He's level with the tackle, um, and. He he then is just able to use that speed. You can see the tackle's already got his hips completely turned around facing the wrong way. Yeah, um, you and that. yeah, you, you don't want that. You <laughs> Ideally, you want the tackle to stay as square as possible, for as long like as possible. That. Yeah. Um, and you can see he, he's got his hips completely turned around because Young's already beating him to the edge. And, and from there, it, it's pretty easy for Young to just kind of dip and and rip around the edge and and close in very quickly on on tyrod taylor for the sack so we see there an example of the speed um and then that that moves on into the the next play and we see what happens when a tackle is worried about the speed they overset and (laughs) chase young's able to beat him inside with a a very nice swim move And, and this is something that chase young's doing better this year is he's identifying how tackles are are reacting to his different rushes and he's giving them change-ups 
So here he reads the tackle over setting to the edge um, and he reads it early and he quickly adjusts his rush into a, a quick swim move where he, he clubs the arm down and, and swims over the top and, and gets inside. Um, and the tackle has no choice but to bring him down and, and get a, a pretty clear penalty. <laughs> um, so then that moves on to the the third one um, that I had drawn up, where then you've got the tackle kind of sat in two places and, and he's not quite sure what's going to happen, and that's when Chase Young can beat him with technique, where um, once we roll back through, you can see here he uses a, a little cross chop to, to try to knock those hands down, um, and then he, he comes back with a rip through and he, he's able to turn that corner. And again, he's got the tackle completely turned around and um, he's able to close in on, on Tyra Taylor and, and Taylor sees the pressure early and tries to bail out, but Montez sweats there to, to help him. Um, and they, they joined for the sack, but unfortunately this was the play where Jamie Davis got called for a, a penalty. So that wiped it out, but mm -hmm. it shouldn't, it shouldn't take away from how we're seeing Chase Young develop a, a, a variety of different pass rush moves. Cause as I say, the first play of this clip, we saw him with speed. The second play, we saw him adjust to an overset and beat, beat the guy inside with a swim move. Um, and then we saw that last one there where he used a nice technique where he's, he's the, the tackle is kind of unsure exactly where he's going, and he's able to beat him with technique with a, a nice cross chop, and then he's able to rip through. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the, the criticisms people had for Chase Young when he was kind of struggling is it was always the same thing with him always trying to kind of win with speed and it's nice to see him kind of finally, you know, put it all together and use all these different moves to, to really win. And he's been doing this for a, a couple of weeks now. We, you saw it more with the sack numbers and when the sack numbers kind of go up, that's when people really start to notice, but mm -hmm. he's been kind of consistently getting pressure um, ever really since he came back. So it was good to see it kind of finally all come together. Nick and Mark, that'd be a simple question, but I noticed that Chase Young's in a two-point stance like often. Is that kind of like his preference? You can have any choice. You can carte blanche what you want to do, or like, or does it tell like he's in a, he's in the pass rush on this play, or like what are we looking at there? <clears throat> it's it's basically just a preference thing. Gotcha. Um, I it, figured. You you can. Uh, there are certain situations where you might want him to put his hand down, um, but it, it's more a case of he can stand up or put his hand down as long as he sees he's in the right alignment um, and you can see like there he's aligned quite wide. Um, and as long as he's aligned that wide, he has the right angle to, to be able to get to the quarterback very quickly. Um, and he's obviously times the snap really well. Um, and, and it's perhaps just a preference of, you know, he's, he's higher up. He can maybe see that snap a little bit better. Gotcha. Um, it, it's just a personal preference thing really. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I do love this clip of, you can just kind of see right as the ball is, is snapped, you can see him already moving. You've got no one else really kind of out of their stance yet, and it's it's pretty cool to see that. That's why you draft him so high, because this was all over the tape at Ohio State, and in, and in his rookie year as well, he's just, he's just the fastest guy out there. And when you have that explosive speed um, and you get tackles worried about it, that's when you it, – the thing that Chase Young, as, as Nick said, Chase Young didn't vary his, his rushes enough. And this year we've seen him do a lot more bull rushes and, and power rushes and, and convert his speed to power. Um, and, and that's been really nice to see. He's, he's been adding that to his game and he's been driving tackles back into the quarterback and, and creating pressures that way. Um, and that's all just going to help him with a more variety of rush because then it comes back to, okay, well, this how am I going to block Chase Young? Because he's going to... If I set back, he's just gonna bull rush me into the quarterback. If I if I hold my position, he's gonna beat me for speed. If I overset to the edge, he's now able to beat me inside. Um, so it's how do I now try to game plan for Chase Young? And that's why we've seen quite a lot of teams usually send quite a lot of help towards Chase Young. Um, and that'll be a running back or a tight end staying into chip. That'll be the offensive line sliding his way to try to get a guard out there to help um, and. Sometimes both of those things happen where you have a tight end staying into chip and you have the line sliding that way anyway. Um, and, and that really destroys the protection plan for the offense because you have to be sliding the line towards Chase Young. And as we kind of see, as we saw with the sacks for Washington, if you're able to dictate the way the line sliding, you can create a lot of options off the other side. Um, and if, if they wanted to, that they don't, 
typically tend to Washington. They, they tend to stick with their four man rush, but if they wanted to, they could send some overloads from the other side, knowing that the line sliding towards Chase Young because he's such a threat. Um, and, and this is why I put out the tweet the other night saying that if, if I'm Washington and I'm thinking, do I trade Chase Young or, or Montez Sweat? I, I would be looking to extend Chase Young because he, A, he's playing at a very high level right now. Uh, B, he's only 24. Uh, he'll be 25 next year. And if, you, if you're giving him the kind of standard three or four year contract, he still won't be 30 years old by the time that contract runs out. Um, and C, he dictates game plans. He forces offenses to go, okay, he, this guy is too good for our left tackle to leave one on one. What do we have to do to? to help our left tackle is it keeping a tight end into chip maybe is it keeping running back to chip maybe that's then uh preventing those guys from going out and running routes so that's making it much easier on the coverage um then it's you know okay maybe that's not helping enough we need to slide the line off to his side and help out that way and that as we said creates opportunities which, on which is why i said I'd, I'd be stunned if they move them i don't i don't think they will i don't it's, see uh, any it, it's, purpose in why you would i mean Really, you know, your fourth or fifth round pick is that is that really what you'd like to get in return? I don't. I think you'd keep them, and hopefully, new management when they get in here will find a way to hold them down. Because to Mark's point, twenty four year olds with this kind of talent going on twenty five don't grow on trees. Who 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 do you get that is essentially going to be better? And I think they know that it's it's the prove it year that that they wanted to see, and and, and this is why. This is why you have him prove it because, again, it, he, he's turned himself and this is what you see all of the best edge rushers do. They turn themselves from athletic freaks and athletic speed rushers to, you know, well-balanced pass rushers that can beat you in multiple ways. And that's how you get the the Nick Bosa's, the Max Crosby's and all those great edge rushers, TJ Watt, Mike Parsons. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. And that's why you wanted to see it be after all these injuries and, and him proving it this year is – it's really great to see, and I, and I agree with Mark. I, I think they should extend him. I think this is what they wanted to see. This is everything they really kind of wanted to see, and I know some fans are going to say the sack numbers, the impact plays, all that sort of stuff aren't there, but they will come. The more pressure, the more opportunities you have, the more times you can get easy sacks and all those sort of things, and they will come. The pressures and all that sort of stuff, he's, he's playing the best he's played since since the injury. I was going to say, Nick, he's probably he's, pro, he's projecting to have his best career year, right? I think he had, what, yeah. seven and a half sacks, maybe nine sacks as a rookie year, has five sacks through seven games so far. He's projecting to have you know, double digit sacks by the end of the year, which is fantastic. Yeah, and, and again, it's the pressures. The pressures matter. Pressures yeah. matter. I mean, <laughs> it, they, they tell the story. It's the best kind of predictive way to look at, you know, future sacks and, and whatnot. So he's, he's up there with the top edge rushers and pressures, and he missed two games. And so it's – it's really what you want to see, and they will come. The splash plays will come. Trust me. And just for the record, gentlemen, I think that Chase Young had a good chord with our fan base. You know, Arch said he's 21, he's 24 years old. He's, you know, there's definitely a lot of potential right there. Colin Dumfrey said this is great to see. A uh, really high snap count, which is very valuable. And Arch said um, you keep players that came in the building, which is great. And then Chase said right here, the pressures matter. So I agree. I definitely agree. <clears throat> And, and frankly, I think he's playing his best ball since Ohio State. I mean, the, the rookie year was fairly good, but if you remember, he beat up on some, on some. Uh, you know, I mean, you got to beat up on who's there. But I, I again, I I can't see anybody getting traded, uh, and I don't know why the new owner would let anybody that they don't think is going to be here next year making decisions for the future. So, for those of you that think they're going to trade him, I I'd be stunned. All right, fellas, uh, excellent stuff here today. Some good, some bad, some stuff we can clean up. Well, a lot of bad. <laughs> a lot of bad. A lot of bad. Clean up. Uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday. Yep. Peace.